So next up we have uh, malware analy analysis with uh, Christian and Aaron from Cert 80. Okay. Um, hi, we're going to present together. Uh, Christian is actually the, the author of the Minibis uh, tool, and uh, I was asked like uh, to ask first, who knows Minibis? Brief, quick show of hands. Who, who knows Minibis? No. So nobody uses it. Okay. Okay. I hope afterwards. Okay. So um, what are we going to present? Um, I'm f first going to give you a brief overview and I'll use the opportunity, uh, since you're here in Vienna now, uh, to briefly talk about, really, three minutes about CERDT, uh, what we do, our tools, our services, and I hope that you will interact more with us uh, in the future. After that, we're going to talk, um, Christian is going to talk a lot about Minibis and uh, Minibis applications, give an example. We prepared a live demo, which is going to come, hopefully, if the computer works. Um, during the session, I'm going to turn on the second uh, projector. Then you're going to talk about the future of Minibis. Um, and yeah, so that's roughly the plan. So first of all, uh, sorry if some things don't work out as they should. Well, let's see if they, we hope they, they all do. We, we had a problem with a PC before. Uh, and this was a last minute scheduled uh, talk, so we had very little time to prepare it. Um, also, I want to use the opportunity to, opportunity to announce the, the uh, or to remind you maybe, that the first conference is going to happen in Vienna in 2011, and we're also going to present the uh, mini piece there. And it's already, it's already usable, so it's a preview, but you can already download it. The version 2.1 beta is on our website, and we would really like to have some feedback for, from you. Okay, so survey team, as I said, brief uh, overview. Um, we're the national cert uh, for Austria since 2008. We work to, together with the Federal Chancellery of Austria uh, in the form of a gov cert. Um, and we see ourselves sort of as the fire brigade in case something really very bad happens with the internet in Austria. Uh, and as such, we are then a communication hub for security incidents. And CERDIT is just a project of the .at registry, um, Nick AT. Okay, so what do we do? Some of you know the CMU chart. Uh, we focus on alerts and warnings, so you can get on our webpage um, uh, alerts and warnings. We also have uh, uh, incident handling capabilities, and uh, as you will see with Minibis, we can, and especially you, can do our artifact handling and artifact analysis. Um, we have technology watch announcements uh, and especially education training and awareness building. So trainings, we also offer like regular trainings like the transits uh, training. Uh, some of you know that, TFC cert transits training. Um, and we have a uh, so-called IT, IT security Stammtisch, uh, which is a, a meeting every month uh, where we have some very interesting, nice uh, current presentation. And afterwards we go and have a beer together. This is a perfect way to get to know each other in the IT security circles in, in Austria. So, mailing lists, and as I said, we're sort of this hub for IT security in, uh, incidents or information sharing. So I hope you will work with us because we're not the police. That's an important thing. When you report to us something, uh, you don't report it to the police automatically. You don't. Uh, we, we will just sim simply try to help you to get in contact with the right people to get uh, some problem fixed. Or it could be a vulnerability discovery and uh, we'll, we'll try to help you to get it fixed really with the vendors and um, we can escalate that. Okay, there's a web page. So let's get started with malware analysis with Minibis. Um, the inspiration in the history is, of course, Anubis. Who knows, quick show of hands, who knows Anubis? 
Yep, that's quite some people, yeah? Okay, so a minibus is essentially the mini Anubis, and um, you needed, at some point, you needed some offline uh, analysis cap capabilities. So we were uh, asking the, pe the, the people who wrote Anubis if we could have an offline version. And it became a little bit complicated, uh, took a little bit long, uh, license and cost issues. So um, you were looking at writing one yourself, right? <laughs> So, for those who don't know Anubis, this is an online, uh, it's a website where you can upload a binary here, and um, uh, then you enter a code, a uh, small capture, and then it gets analyzed. And Anubis will send you back a web page des describing which registry keys were set, which network connections the malware attempted to make, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So lots of log analysis capabilities in here. And it was done by the ISAC lab, which also came from Vienna, actually. Okay, so uh, the motivation was that um, you had the, I think you had the, the question, the first question, how much malware, how much, what percent of, percentage of the malware checks if it's running in a virtual machine, right? Okay, so that's why we, we wanted to have uh, Anubis, an offline version of Anubis. Yeah? And um, I think you sort of just started working on it and programmed it, and it became bigger and bigger, and, uh, Minibis, and uh, it's, it's a great tool now. It's in, uh, under ISTL license, which is roughly equivalent to the BSD license, so you can use it in your projects without any problem. The advantage of having an offline version is that you, of course, cannot, the malware cannot check, do a run on, uh, on some IP address, some specific IP address, um, <clears throat> and then stop working. Uh, this was shown to be a very feasible attack by uh, another guy from um, close to Vienna who wrote that site, avtracker.info and uh, people were a little bit upset about that. So he was giving malware author authors a tool to check if they were running under Anubis. With the offline version, of course, that's not possible. Okay, so I think I'm going to hand over the mic now. Hello. Hello from my side. Okay, uh, let's get this going. So, um, this is our view of the big Anubis, and yeah, and you see, it's the Ankh, which they have in common. Um, okay, but uh, actually that's all. There's no single line of code uh, which uh, which which is in both projects. So it's really just the name and uh, and the basic idea behind it. My basic idea, as Aaron said, um, I had about uh, 5,000 samples and I wanted to know if, how many of them are, are able to detect if they run in a virtual machine. So I had this pot of samples and I thought of a black box, which would be nice to throw them into. And afterwards, I would like to get the results back. Well, yeah. Good wish. And of course, uh, the basic concept behind that all is uh, behavioral analysis. I guess uh, every one of you knows what behavioral analysis is, but even if not, just uh, a short uh, introduction in, into it. Uh, firstly, you have to prepare a system uh, especially virtual machine, because this is the kind of, of, of way you can uh, take back any infection easily. So you prepare your system with monitoring tools. After that, you transfer the sample to the virtual machine. Then you start up the monitoring tools, run the sample, and give it some time to do its nasty things. Uh, after that, you you need to. After that, you need to save the monitoring logs, 
uh, and, and, and to rescue them out of the virtual machine because otherwise they would be gone if you, if you revert the virtual machine. Yeah, and the last step would be to analyze the logs. Okay, so uh, my first idea was uh, that's a good concept. So let's put it into many bits. Uh, so we have a physical machine which acts uh, as the VM host and we have the pro band, I call it pro band, inside. Actually, I wanted to, to have some similarity to, uh, to a laboratory. So I decided to, to call the safe place researcher and to call the unsafe place the pro band which is much like a uh, guinea pig or so. Okay, the concept then got a little bit bigger. So uh, I needed two things. Uh, one thing is I have two isolated systems and then I need to, to transfer information between them. So that's why FTP is on board. And of course, uh, both of these systems, as I already said, are isolated. They need a controller process, which act together. And the big picture um, is we have again here the proband and, the, and the, the physical machine, and everything is done from this component. That's the controller process of the researcher. And this is responsible uh, for, for sending uh, the samples from the sample pod over FTP to the proband and receiving the log files back uh, w w in, into the folder where they are supposed to be. Um, Minipi SCUI. Uh, yes, we have some eye candy. Um, the mini is, is is majorly uh, being written for uh, to, to have a comfortable solution to do the uh, the configuration stuff because the configuration is nowadays really complex. There are lots of features, and you might get lost if you uh, if you want to do it by by hand uh, via editor. Um, but that's the only reason um, why Minibus GUI exists. Actually, it's the CPR process which uh, gets the, the configuration file and does all the rest. So uh, if, you, if you plan to, if you plan to, uh, to do or to use this in some kind of automation, which is mostly on, on command line based, uh, you have no problem because this is a command line based worker and you just uh, configure your, your uh, scan scenario and give it a, the MiniB CPR. Yeah, okay. And so maybe, <laughs> maybe if I can add something here, is like uh, the, the, of course, when you have this mini piece uh, controller uh, process of the researcher, CPR, uh, like on multiple machines, like one after the other, you just, of course, do it in parallel and uh, you can um, <coughs> analyze, uh, put in the samples in parallel, which you will need because uh, some malware needs some time until it's really started or it waits intentionally a little bit. So uh, it probably pays off to to have a battery of uh, servers analyzing uh, the sample set. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so one step back. Um, what is uh, what is really what what is Minibis at all? Minibis is more a kind of a practical framework to to simulate the activities a malware analyst would do. So. Nothing more. Actually, it's not a, a ready-made uh, analysis station. It depends on you, what you want to do with it. 
So it has lot, lots of customizing features, and that's also the good stuff in it. Um, as I said, customizing. This uh, dot are the places where you can customize the whole system. Uh, customizing means uh, that you just have to, to, to write some shell scripts. So you, there's no need for a special kind of, of language to learn. If, you, if you're able to, to write shell scripts on Linux and Windows side, then you're already in. Okay, when you have uh, the results in your results folder, after the analysis uh, happened, then you, you'd like to do something with those uh, results. And for, for, that, for this situation, we also have a tool set, which is called uh, Post Minibus, with, which is uh, just again, fully customizable. Okay, so that's the configuration stuff, the GUI. Um, this is the progress bar. Um, it shows you how far your scan is going. And you, every time uh, the scan produces some debug output, you will see it here. Um, for configuration, you press the config button and are, pre uh, are presented with these more or less complicated uh, form. You have firstly the general settings that you have to, uh, to configure uh, the directory where the results uh, are going to be written. Um, then you need the FTP directory, a name for the sample. It's kind of cheap uh, counter measure for, for malware um, detecting its name. Uh, actually, we, we, uh, we use VirtualBox. Um, but when you, when you can, uh, when you use how to use, when you know how to use a VMware, for example, or Cuemo, uh, it's no problem to do it that way too because uh, we have the specific uh, commands that are needed for starting, stopping, or reverting the virtual machine, also customizable. But in our initial configuration, uh, we decided to, to use VirtualBox. May, may I just uh, add something here again? Yeah. It's like, uh, like recently I was talking with uh, the people from uh, Siemens CERT, and they were, uh, they were telling us um, um, yeah, Minibus is cool, we use it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and we use it uh, with VMware. And, and uh, when I told you, you were surprised that it works just like that, no problem. Um, there were some, some minor changes, apparently. We don't know which ones, but it was obviously so simple to actually just replace VirtualBox here with VMware um, so that they just did that. So I think that's, you know, just add a new command to start a different virtual machine. Um, another thing is that uh, Anubis uses uh, QEMO, uh, which allows you to instrument uh, from the outside and to really um, uh, trace on the OS level uh, or play with the, the tick, the, the clock tick. Yeah? So you can go faster and slow uh, and stuff like that with QEMO as far as I know. Um, I think I'm maybe talking a little bit now about the future already, but uh, anyway, uh, so this is possible. Okay, so the next tab uh, is about the researcher scripting. Um, as I already said, here you do just shell scripts and they are started or executed uh, at the specific times or events. So here we have, uh, after all has stopped, we have uh, some command here that converts the, the pcap file into a human readable ASCII file.
the Proven scripting. Um, the top two uh, frames, uh, you, you can define the tools that you, uh, that you like to, to be transferred into the Proven. So uh, it's not a must that, er that any tool that you like to use uh, has to be installed inside or copied inside the Proband. Only those tools uh, which need some kind of uh, real setup routine, like uh, the, P the PKIP driver, for example, uh, you have to put uh, into the virtual machine before that. But other tools like process monitor, it's possible to, to define these tools that they be transferred into the virtual machine. And on the other side, these are the result files. And any file that you define here is getting transferred back. These are the actions before the sample gets executed. So we start up the monitoring tools here. And that's when the sample exited or the time's up. Uh, regarding the time, uh, I will lose some words later now. Uh, and here we also have uh, the need to, to, to save our files or to end up the monitoring uh, state. And that's the new stuff of version 2.1. Um, we now are n not tied to PE files, so like .ex, .exe or .dll files. Uh, now you can also customize your file types that you like to, to analyze. Uh, in a, I think, very simple way, um, we depend on the file tool or or a customized file tool which, uh, which acts just the same, or we can depend on suffixes or extensions. Um, we have regular expression match here, or just uh, uh, the not match. And here we have the, the script which is, res which is responsible for the, for the execution of the sample. So, I think we have another here. Yeah, so for, for, a fr for a Flash movie, for example, it's like more complicated than just uh, calling an, an, an executable, but it's, 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 it's easy at all, because uh, it's just an, an echo statement which, uh, which writes uh, the specific uh, HTML code into uh, a HTML file, which I call afterwards via uh, the program files and Internet Explorer. So in that way, uh, also PDF works or JavaScript works. Uh, also a good thing is, for example, URL. So we get a feed from, from, from uh, Bing or Google, for example, with malicious sites. And this is, uh, this is a way for us to, to automatically analyze these uh, URLs. So can, can I add something again here? Yeah. It's like, um, I don't know if you were here with the talk um, from the colleague, I think, from Russia, who was presenting um, the uh, Flash video um, um, exploits and uh, the current malware with Flash. So essentially, you could feed in uh, URLs in, into this system and then get a result out for, uh, let's say, all the get host by name calls that this malware triggers. This is pretty interesting because that list you can export, as we will see soon, um, and uh, use it for your firewall, for example. Okay, we have a demo prepared here, a live, live demo, if it works. <laughs> okay, started. Should, should yes. I start it? Okay. Um, Good, so here is the, the startup screen. Um, let's kick this away. And in the background, while you continue to talk, you will see actually the system running. So uh, as you showed before, this is the main screen. We prepared a configuration already. Um, that configuration uh, will actually um, 
what what does it do? This this configuration test JavaScript or what does it do? Which one did you? What prepare? you mean? Which this this one? What what does it test now? Is it, or what's the sample? Is it JavaScript malicious uh, JavaScript or what is it? I I, I think I. I chose six to eight samples from okay, offensive so computing. Okay. So uh, various sample types. It's okay. a flash movie, it's a PDF, it's uh, just an executable, okay. a, J a JavaScript code. So now you can see the FTP transfer into the, the VM probe. Um, so here the files are being transferred. And wind dump is being started. Ah, yeah, and it's going to serve some PDF file, I think, right? I think you're right. Okay. Well, are we connected to the network here, actually? No. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I checked it. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Otherwise, you might get some complaints. Okay, so as you see, it kind of works. Um, what it does is just simulating uh, my manual activities or your manual activities that you would have to do. Um, in the result phase, we have, uh, we have a structure, uh, a folder structure, for each scan, so it depends on, on subfolders just because of a better organization, uh, which starts with the year, then the month, then the day, and then comes the, the scan itself with the timestamp. And beneath this last folder, you have all the files that's been uh, sent back from, from the program. So now it's transferring the files back. Okay, again for post minipis. Um, it's also new for version 2.1 and it's a little tool set with with one with just one plugin from our side. But this plugin is uh, focused at, at, at our work. So our plugin uh, uses some kind of classification to, to tell if there's something malicious going on with the sample or with the URL. And then it reports uh, a severity, which is informational, a warning, or an alert. So here I use PostMinibus with this scan and grab all the lines with an alert. So this is a this is an example line for post minibus for the output. And here it wrote in an auto start register key uh, the written file network.exe. So this is the MD5 of the sample. Here is the, the timestamp of the of the of the the sample uh, being analyzed. The severity. So again, FTV transfers in the background. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, one example e evaluation, we wanted to know uh, what's the, the favorite uh, auto run method of malware authors. Um, and we, we used f uh, 3,000 samples to analyze, it, uh, to analyze this, and we found out that um, the current version run key is really the one which is mostly used. Uh, followed by the current control set services. So that's just uh, an example for what you could do 
by mass malware analysis through Minibis. But uh, you don't have to do mass malware analysis because you also uh, could all only throw in just one sample, or you can use it in an automation like Anubis is with a web service in front of it. So there are lots of possibilities uh, and potential in it uh, which waits to use to be used. Yeah. So maybe one example, another example would be like to connect with uh, um, what the visualization talk uh, gave us. Like you know, we could again take all the network connections from there for 3,000 samples and plot them or something like that. Yeah. So it's really very, very exp extendable. <coughs> okay, what about the future? Um, as Aaron said, uh, 2.1 is actually in, in beta stadium, beta phase. Um, but I think the next version will be available um, around summer, just around the first. And hopefully there will be some parallelization in, because then it really scales, especially with 10,000, 100,000 samples. Um, also, interesting stuff is diffing between uh, various configurations, like different browsers or diff different Windows versions. So uh, each sample would be thrown in to uh, virtual machines um, having various browsers or different Windows versions. And the diffing would, uh, would, would be done automatically afterwards. Then I will do some GUI for, for post mini biz. Yeah, an installer actually, it's, it's not so easy uh, to, to install the Minipis environment like, uh, just like clicking on, on a button install because uh, you, have, you, you have to install uh, a Microsoft Windows right in the virtual machine. So it's just, um, it's, it's a problem of, of, uh, with the license of, of, of Microsoft and Windows. So, it will never be that easy that you just click a uh, installer button and then it runs. But maybe... But, but I might, might add the readme file is really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, more VMs uh, in a native support from us. So uh, Minibis will work with VMware and QAMO in, in the future. Then uh, some guys asked me to, to add a 64-bit Linux version. That shouldn't be that difficult. OS X version. Um, yeah, and support for physical machines. So no more virtual machines. Uh, I have some idea how to use uh, physical machines uh, with data recovery cards as a substitute for virtual machine. And I guess that's, that's one point that's really interesting. Um, support for GUI-based tools, yeah, of course, because uh, now in the, in the actual state, we're depend, uh, we depend on, on tools uh, being command line based. More sample scripts. Okay, that, that leads me to another point, community. Uh, our project is, is declared to be uh, really within community lifestyle. Yeah? So we give it out for free, but uh, we need the community to, to develop some scripts and so on. And for that reason, we made the decision to, to go to a public platform, and maybe Aaron, you can. Okay. So uh, can you just press on the next slide, please? Yeah. yeah. So here is the the URL. It's on Google Code, um, and the idea would be now, and that's also why we present it, is that um, maybe we could encourage you to download it and try out. If you're into malware analysis, try out your favorite analysis tools, 
uh, your um, scripting tools, whatever, uh, try to get a log file from that and try to do the same thing with Minibis and then maybe share the scripts. Now the, the goal of this would be that all of us profit from it uh, as a community so that you can, uh, f through Google code, through that neutral platform actually, uh, we could share the scripts and document them. There's a wiki there, there's a forum there, whatever. Um, a Twitter feed, you have a Twitter feed even. So uh, this would actually, that's the hope, that, that's the hope uh, make all our malware analysis lives much easier uh, by sharing the small, the small snippets of scripts that you need for running it here and analyzing it and, and writing classification filters for it. Okay, I think that sums it up, actually. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. That's the end of time. our presentation. Any questions? Just a question. Uh, this this proband is it only scripted, or can you also use it interactively? Because I heard there's a couple of malware that is looking for. Uh, really a user on the machine for typical interactions with the mouse moving and clicking and if that doesn't happen it wouldn't yeah. or maybe you want to answer uh, whatever yeah. if you like yeah I, I, you were talking recently about like some 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 uh, adding some program which simulates clicks and stuff like that mm -hmm. so it's just a uh, getting to the windows message queue right well you have to be aware that there are Always uh, some samples that that would uh, that will detect your uh, your minibus machine or will detect that no user is on. So there's all, always a chance that that there's some sample which might fall out of the the results. But for for mass malware analysis, uh, analysis like three three thousand files. Let's say 10 files are not that, not so a pain. I think uh, also when, when I remember what you, what you tried to uh, do, find out before with uh, Anubis was if actually malware detects it's running in a virtual machine. That's trivial. You just need to check for the hard drive name. If it's a QAMO hard drive, then it's a QAMO machine, right? Um, but your result was that they don't care about that, right? Yes. So nowadays, now, if they are doing this, uh, this would be some sort of protection of running <laughs> your stuff in, inside uh, an emulator. Yeah, that, that was the basic idea behind the project. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what got us started actually for for, for this, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. You could re just rename the driver of your hard drive from Hitachi something to QEMO. <laughs> Some more questions? No questions? Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Well, thank you.